Hey, welcome back to the Improvement Channel. Today we're going to be building up a new welding cart for the Lincoln Electric HD140. This is a 120 volt welder that I use to weld out fence panels and things outside of the shop. So um, we're going to build this one up a little different than we did the last one. Last one we just did on casters for the Hobart. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go check that one out. And uh, also take a second to like and subscribe. We appreciate that. Let's get started. So anyway, I'm headed to Harbor Freight. They're supposed to have some uh, hand trucks. So here they are. They have plenty of hand trucks over at Harbor Freight as well as furniture dollies. And that's the difference. But I got on there and was looking up one. And I thought I had something in mind just about $10 cheaper. And the funny thing is um, Northern right down the street has that location geofenced and when you start looking something up for that store the first thing that pops up is northern so i looked at that and i found these two um, hand trucks at northern picked them up they were ten dollars less when i picked them up i thought i was going to need two but decided to go a little different direction on the hobart welding cart you've probably seen that already so you know what i'm talking about there the lincoln electric is my 120 volt cart that i do towed across yards and different things mostly for doing wrought iron fence repair so I wanted to make sure that I had something that will be easily pulled back and forth so that's where I come up with using the hand trucks this is a project that I've been very excited about the welding cart build for the Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 110 such a needed thing I've been doing fence projects for at least a couple years now with this welder and I have been lugging this 50 pound welder 50 to 100 yards into people's backyards, moving it around three or four times while it's back there, and then lugging the thing back. 50 pounds isn't that heavy, but when you start carrying it a distance and then you got cords hanging off that you're trying to hold on to and you're taking three or four trips back and forth, I really, really look forward to having this welding cart where I can throw some things on there and do all of that stuff and uh, make less trips back and forth and make easier trips back and forth. It'll really improve my, uh, my work life on something like that. So here you can see I'm cutting the handle off the back of that and I'm going to go ahead and cut this bottom off as, re as well. I'm making this in such a way to where it's going to kind of work like a hand truck but it's going to be a welding cart. So I'm going to run a little fast motion here and let you uh, kind of see what's going on. One thing that I am making sure to do as I'm cutting um, all of these, all of this metal off is to not cut into my um, handle. So this uh, bent pop type handle, I, I want to leave welds on top of that and I'll come back with a flap disc and uh, get all the welds off. I don't want to have any holes or any voids in that metal. Here I am getting a couple measurements. I'm going to cut the ends of these off to have a nice, uh, real smooth cut. I've, I've been grinding there with where the it was really welded really well with the uh, bottom of the hand truck. So I'm getting these cut off good and clean. And I'm going to save these pieces. I'm going to be using those here a little bit later in this project. I'll show you what for when we get to it. But uh, here I am with the flap disc, just getting this all cleaned up getting it perfect, ready to go, be ready for paint here shortly. All right, now it's time to get into the fun stuff. I'm starting to cut up the 16 gauge, one and a half inch tubing that I'm using for the main frame of the uh, Lincoln Electric project here. Um, I use the same thing on the Hobart project, works in that, working out really well. So now that this is my second cart that I'm building, I can kind of take some ideas that worked really well over there and carry those over onto this cart here. And this cart here is really a lot more important than the uh, Hobart cart to get it right. The Hobart cart is gonna sit on that uh, rack and, and move around right now just the length of the cord that's on the Hobart rack, so, or Hobart welder. Uh, this one's gonna be all over the place, so really gotta be careful to make sure I get this one right. So you can see here I've got some of uh, black uh, plastic lumber scraps. Those are two by eights and I am building around it. What I like to do is just make sure that the, uh, the, the material fits right in there. Um, 
you know, it's great to have everything square and I'm working that direction for sure. But the main thing we want to do is make sure the lumber fits in there and that it fits in there tight and not real loose. So I'm going around and I'm tacking this down. I've got the uh, bottom plate from the hand truck there to make sure that the uh, tubing is pushed back against the tubing where I've got it tacked on the other side. I want it pushed up tight so I can get a good weld across there. 16 gauge can be tricky to weld if you have some gaps. It can be tricky to weld without gaps, but if you've got gaps, it's very easy to burn right on through that material. So you see me tacking and then you see me uh, coming back and welding that up. This welding cart design is pretty basic. As you can pretty much tell here, the top and the bottom were the same. So uh, real easy to work with on that. I'm going to have the top shelf at a different angle, just like I did on the Hobart, so that it's kind of setting up at an angle so the controls are, are looking at you, easier to see, easier to reach. The cables are headed the right direction, that sort of thing. So now that i got everything welded up, I'm jumping on here with an 80 grit flap disc, and I'm knocking all the welds down flat, so it's going to look really good, like one piece of metal, when I go to uh, do the paintwork on it. So here we go. I'm putting the little round pieces right there on the ends. Uh, that happened pretty fast, so hopefully you caught it, but you'll definitely see that again, and I'll tell you what that's for. Right here I'm putting some uh, one-inch pieces down below it so that when I knock this lumber in there that it'll stay in there. Um, I didn't even have to attach it. I've got that th stuff in there so tight. Uh, you can knock it out with a hammer, but it's not going to fall out. So another thing that I did was I jumped in here with these uprights and cut them at a five degree angle. I figured that out with the Hobart welder and just kind of guessed and guessed right. So when I put that at the five degree angle and I move it up a little bit, then I just come back and find the spot with the floor right here. I've got them both even laying on the floor and the, uh, the five degree angle shoots it up. I throw a, uh, a level on it so that I know that it's going level across there horizontally and that puts the uh, angle that I want in there. So that's going to be ready for uh, wheels and casters, and I'm going to have a little bit of an angle on the top shelf like I want. So just doing a little cleanup, finish up type deal on some of the welds here. So the next thing that I'm going to be working on is uh, getting the axles put in. So I use the axle holder right off of the hand truck, I looked at possibly getting the wheels separate, and then I said, hey, you know, do you guys sell any axles? Neither Northern or Harbor Freight sold the axle rod there. And, you know, after I would have had that, I would have had to have some source, some little piece of pipe that would uh, barely uh, go around the axle rod. And I was just like, hey, look, for 30 bucks, I can go ahead and get the hand truck, cut it up, use the handle, use the axle, use the wheels, use the axle holders. So, yeah, just got that knocked out. Got a little more trim work to do on that, and then uh, those will just be welded in there where they go. Here you can see me welding up a couple scrap pieces. I did this on the Hobart welding cart. Worked really well. Basically just... 45 a couple short pieces or if you've got a couple of pieces with 45s on the end of them, you know, cut them off. Weld them together and I'll weld that there to the side of the cart and that'll be a good place to uh, drape my uh, gun and uh, ground cable over whenever I, it's in transport. And uh, here in a little bit I'll jump on the uh, back and grab uh, some one inch pot, I'm sorry, one inch tubing and do the same thing. But here I'm just getting the, uh, the handle tacked on, getting it where I want it, getting it all straight and everything, checking all that. Here I am putting the little elbows of the one inch. So I put two on the top, and I'm putting one down at the bottom. And I believe I'll be able to put 100 feet or so of some really heavy uh, gauged extension cord on that, and it'll hold it. So I'm pulling off the casters here with a pair of pliers. Got tired of that real quick grab the uh, impact wrench and uh, pull those off rather fast. So these are th some uh, furniture movers, furniture dollies I got from Walmart. Walmart had the cheapest ones ever. I used that um, in another video with the um, hidden fence video with the gate build. 
and I had those left over, wasn't using them, so I've pulled them off for not only the Hobart cart, but I've also pulled them off for this Lincoln cart. Uh, painting up some stuff here. It was pretty cold outside, so I, I did it in the garage where it's a little warmer. I uh, just did it with the door open to get some good ventilation there, did it on a tarp. But uh, back to those furniture dollies. Those casters are not very good. I've bought some casters off of Amazon that are about a four pack for $20. Uh, those furniture dollies were, I think, $15, which, you know, included four casters. So they're really cheap and uh, they don't work really well. I need to I need to change it out on the Hobart. On this one, I don't really care. So you can see the two little pieces of scrap pop I put in there now that it's all painted and finished. Um, those are going to be for the MIG gun. So in between welding things, I can stick the MIG gun somewhere rather than having to pick it up and down off the ground. So that's the plan for that. But yeah, the paint turned out well. I couldn't find anything that exactly matched the Lincoln color, but that's pretty darn close. I want to go over a few things that I did as finishing touches here. Uh, I've got the Lincoln electric welder actually attached to the card. It does not come off. I opened up where the wire feed goes and uh, took some bolts and run them through some holes down and through the plastic lumber and bolted them down. Uh, right here I have taken a one and a half inch end cap, drilled a couple holes in it, cut a hole in the corner of it. I'm running the wires through there and uh, it's going to be a nice finished look. So right here I've got the, the cables ran through that tubing and back to, to take up the extra wire and now I'm putting this cap in there. So now I'm only just going to have, what does it look like, maybe a foot or so of wire sticking out. So I'll hook the extension cord onto that and it'll just always stay plugged in. I will also put, either get an extension cord with three ends on it is probably what I'll do, um, or I'll, I'll have a plug-in that has three ends so that I'll also be able to run the grinder and, you know, charge a cell phone, that kind of thing, or, or camera type deal. So that kind of finishes it up. I've put the one and a half inch caps in, and there's the one inch caps in, and I think that black does a really good finish uh, with the red welding cart. I cannot wait to put this thing into use on the first job for like a wrought iron fence or something. I'll have to be sure and bring you guys along with me. You can see here how the uh, ground cable and the, the MIG gun fits on here perfectly. Very happy with how this finished out. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Also, I'd love to sit, hear any of your comments here on YouTube. Jump down here in the comments, let me know what you thought of this welding project. I know this one's a little more specific because I've got one for the shop and then I've got one that's portable and this is the portable one. So if you haven't caught the other one from the Hobart welder with gas on it, this one's for flux core only. Uh, catch that, I'll have that in the uh, end here where you can click on that link. Thanks again.